Welcome back, uh, part three of tutorial 18. And we now have our quantum machines available. We have our quantum test server, which is going to be our bare metal quantum machine, our quantum storage itself. And then we have our client. So the first thing I'm going to do is just quickly go and log in to our client machine. To do that, I'm going to grab a terminal and I'm going to uh, SSH to root at and the IP address of this machine 159.8.189.116 before I hit return I'm just going to go to passwords I'm going to grab the root password again I'll be killing these machines afterwards so uh, they won't be available um, Ah, now this is my SSH warning. <laughs> you may get this when you're using lots and lots and lots of machines. Um, so what I want to do is I just want to vi um, dot SSH slash known hosts. You may get this. It's good to see this um, because I've had a machine before that had this IP address. Um, so we're looking for a 116 in here. In fact, what we can do, as you can see, I've been there. Uh, oh, in fact, there it is. Look, the very last one. If I just get rid of that DD to get rid of the line, um, if we do this again, this time it says yes, and that's where it stores it. So worth seeing that. Um, I have this in my cache. So there we go. So we're in on the quanta client. Excellent. And that is our um, straightforward um CentOS, it's blank, it's got nothing on it. Um, if I do a DF, we can see what's mounted up here. So there's our standard XVDA giving us root and our temporary file systems. So that's all we have on there at the moment. That's exactly what we'd expect. I'm going to put that away. I'm going to go back to devices. And one of the questions I get quite often is, well, okay, so I've got this quantum machine here. I'm just Click on there. We have our quantum storage machine. How, how do I get, you know, in there to actually look at uh, OS Nexus? Well, you simply take the uh, public or the private. You, you would probably only ever. I mean, I left a public IP address on here. Um, you should take a bare metal machine with a public and then basically turn that interface off if you want to have just private networking. What that gives you is your 20 terabytes per month of outbound bandwidth, which can be quite handy to pool with other machines because you can pool the bandwidth at uh, software. But um, you would usually only ever have a private IP address on machines, active on machines that are purely internal secure machines. And that would mean you would have to um, create an SSL or a PPTP uh, VPN tunnel into software and then you would gain access using this IP address. Um, I can do that. I can show you yeah, you would probably connect and if I connect onto that machine that will come up in a second saying connected and then we can go to this IP address. I'll copy that I'll create a new page here. I'm just popping that IP address straight into my browser here. And I'll hit return. And that gives us access to our Quanta store, to the actual menu of our Quanta store. Let me just resize this page so it fits nicely. There we go. Now, you need a password. Well, what's the password going to be? How, how do I actually log in? Is it admin admin? What's the default password? Well, for that, you go back to your passwords and it's the root password of the machine. So take the root password of the machine back to our Quanta store, paste that in. And here is our brand new Quanta store machine. And this is what you'll see when you first log in. So we're able to look at all the different facets of this machine. 
Um, there's far more documentation than I could ever go through and uh, capabilities than I could ever go through on a short uh, video tutorial. I would highly recommend going to uh, Quanta Store's actual um, website and um, reviewing their, uh, sorry, OS Nexus's website and reviewing their Quanta Store documentation. What I'm going to do, um, as we said in the uh, first part of this tutorial, is I'm going to create a storage pool and then a volume, and then we're going to connect that volume to our uh, Quanta client, which is why I've just logged into the Quanta client. So I'm going to show you how to do that in the next couple of parts, but uh, I guess just as a quick review, this is what you can see. We can identify users and groups of users in here and have role-based access control. We can review our replication. Um, again, nothing is set up at the moment, so, so we have nothing available in, in pretty much any of these. Um, they have connectors out to software, Google, Amazon S3, um, so you can use um, object storage as a backup capability from a cloud provider. Um, fully integrated with uh, software object storage. Um, so given this is a software video, you can immediately integrate in using your account ID into your software object store. You can set up a Gluster file system. Um, and maybe I'll do a tutorial uh, on a bit more detail around Gluster and setting that up. Um, set your high availability. And then we can have multi-tenancy to this machine as well and have different resources and different groups able to connect to this machine. Back to storage management, down the left hand side here you can see whether you have any, you know, what you have in terms of hardware. So there's the actual machine itself, it's showing its interfaces in terms of what's available. We can see that we created an ETH0 and an ETH1 and they're both available. Um, the hardware enclosure itself, well, we can have a, a bit more of a look down there from the Adaptic RAID card. We can see we have the logical units that we asked for. So this is a um, our OS. As I said before, I was able to get 300 gigs. They're no longer available now. It's 2, 4 or 8. Um, but this was a 300 gig SSD. And it's uh, a RAID uh, 1. So there's two of them in there for my operating system. Um, this is our 800 gig, it's actually 960.19, or you can see here 894 uh, Gibby bits, uh, Gibby bytes. That's our SSD for cache. And here are our two one terabyte um, SATA disks for our actual disk storage. Um, Again, you can have another look in terms of the, not just the enclosure and the controller, but the actual disks themselves laid out there. Storage pools, well, we haven't created any yet. We haven't created any network shares yet, and we haven't created any storage volumes, or indeed storage volume groups. So there's nothing in there. Um, this is where you would set, once you have all of those volumes, your snapshots, and you would push that into there. And then we don't have any hosts available authorized access to any of our pools. So that's just a very quick high level overview of what's available from your Quanta store once you gain access to it. Um, there are, as I've said, many, many more features than I could possibly cover. This is a quick video to show you how to get some storage up and running, um, which we're gonna do now. Um, so let's get to that in the next part. Welcome back. Now we're getting to pretty much the business end of things. So, um, storage at the moment, we have our Quanta store, there's nothing there really. We have our physical disks. Uh, I think I said actually in the last part that I had, uh, I'm getting mixed up on what I've uh, created. Um, this is only a RAID zero because there is only one actual operating system disk in this machine. So my apologies on the last um, part. I actually thought I had two of these in a RAID 1 configuration. Uh, it looks like I only did one OS disk. So again, apologies. Um, when you do have two disks already set up at a hardware RAID level, um, my one terabyte disks are appearing as a logical device 
with RAID 1, as you can see there. So it's a one terabyte made up of two one terabyte SATA disks. So that's how this would appear if I had two of them in there. Um, so we know we've got physical disks wise. We have no storage pools yet. So we haven't actually created any storage pools. So to do that, create a storage pool, simple as that. Give it a name, quanta test. You can have a description in here. Very worthwhile filling all of these details in in an actual production environment so those administrators who weren't involved in the actual creation of a system in the first instance would be able to follow from the description what was actually created and why so you could put in here you know for accounting or you know such pointers to actually let the administrative staff who are operating the service understand why you created the volume what you created it for etc we're just going to put in this is a test so then you can choose your disks now i said earlier you can have a very large quanta store 36 um disk devices we've only taken a very very small one for the purposes of illustration but all of the disks available appear in here and then you can choose well obvious choice for us is because i'm going to keep this for cash which i'll show you in a second um Obvious choices to choose are already RAID 1, um, one terabyte um, disk, logical volume. So we're going to stick with ZFS. We've chosen that we're going to put it on here. Uh, RAID 0 is fine um, because we're not concatenating loads together. Um, in the storage pool, storage pool is like a combination of lots of disks, uh, one or more. Um, that you can pull together to give you a flexible abstract layer um, for your storage. So that's what we're doing here. We're creating a pool. Now by default as well, I just wanted to point out, it has compression enabled. Now counter to intuition, this actually improves performance for the actual volume. Um, a lot of testing has been done and you can get an awful lot more information from OS Nexus on this but it actually can improve the performance. So that's what we're going to do. We're just going to create one of those. It's that simple. That will take a couple of seconds and it will appear. Now we have a pool of storage available. From that pool of storage, we're now going to create, you know, we could create NFS shares now. We could go in and create a share. Uh, if we did that, it would choose our storage pool here. But we're not doing NFS, we're going to do an actual SCSI. So to create that, we want to create a storage volume. And I'll pop into create storage volume. I'm going to call this uh, Quanta. Um, let's, let's say it's iSCSI Quanta. Give it a slightly different name than Quanta test again. It's already chosen our pool because that's the only pool on this system. So it, by default, it has chosen it. These are the details about what's available on that pool, how much it's utilized, because you can split this pool up, as you can see here. So we're creating a volume on that pool, and at the moment it sets, it's set to 40 gigabytes. Um, I want to make it slightly smaller than that, just purely because we're going to be creating a file system. And in these videos, again, I want to be quick. Um, we're going to thin provision it at the moment. You can go thin or thick to provision that. That's a binary, as you can see, thin, thick, thin. So that's the reserve space. So again, you could create many volumes on that pool and thin provision them if you don't want to use all of the space straight away, if you don't want to reserve it straight away. Um, in terms of the advanced settings, well, this is where our chap is. So we can say it's a read-only volume. You can say it's a read-write volume. I'm going to leave it as read-write. You can have a different block size, depending on the performance that you want out of this. Um, and then you have your chap policies. So you can use the default, which I'm going to leave it as, but if you want that extra layer of security, you can create a chap username and a password on this actual storage volume. So I'm going to leave it at that. 
Um, that's pretty much it. We're creating an 18, say that'll be about 19 terabytes um, of disk space volume that we can make available. So I'll go OK. Again, that'll take a couple of seconds and it will appear, there it is, within our actual uh, Quanta store. So we now have a volume available. Join me in a sec when we'll add uh, network access for a host.